Hi folks, uh, it's been a, a little while since my last video and to be honest I haven't really done much um, through so, little things that have been happening in life but I just thought I'd go through I've made some little changes to my Huina 1583 wheeled loader uh, if anybody's got one of these already you, you, you'll you notice some changes straight away uh, mainly the wheels and tyres these are from magom.com uh, they do different treads uh, styles um, so they, they come with the wheels and and all loaded and foams inside as well and uh, really quite soft um, See if I can get you a little close-up of these. I did try and do the 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 modifications to the original, but I wasn't too I wasn't too happy with the outcome because the the, the rubber on the original ones are really quite hard. So as you can see, these are nice and soft and squishy and I'm not, you know, not putting too much pressure on them. Um, just as a... Here's, here's the originals. And what I did do is with the, the Dremel tool, I, I made the, took the centre of the treads out to, to make it, try and make it more usable and I had taken the tire off as well and trimmed a lot of the the plastic insides to give it a little bit more give but as you can see I'm really having to squeeze that with both hands to get it to, to deform so that's why I opted to go with, with these you can totally see the difference in it <laughs> nice that it cost a little bit but to me it's worth it uh, and and you can hear the the compound as well so that's one change I've done to that um, another one that again would be obvious to someone who's already got them as I've extended the arms um, the the 1583 has got quite short arms here and the biggest downfall of that is was that the, the bucket wouldn't sit flat on the floor when it was fully depressed so I've got these from a chap on eBay called Piggy Taylor RC uh, he makes a lot of uh, 114 scale uh, truck things from aluminium or aluminium if you're from across the pond uh, but these are plastic these are 3d printed and just arm extensions and again they make a a big difference not only to, to get the bucket flat on the ground but also to give you that extra height for when you want to load onto uh, tipper trailers because previously with the original arms it wouldn't clear the likes of a 114 scale tipper uh, trailer so that uh, you could load it up. So that's another reason and again the, the extended tip rod here. So that's, that's a couple of things. Another one which is quite obvious, I'll do a little close up here, is the quick release hitch. Now I got this from AliExpress. Uh, it is metal. Now the only thing, probably that I don't like about it is there's there's quite a bit of quite a bit of slop. However, it it does hold on to the bucket. Now I'll just raise a bit of a malfunction there. Hang on. <laughs> so 
So to release your bucket all you have to do is lift that pin up and that's all it does. So these, uh, these just hook over the tops like that and a little pin goes over your, your top one. So I'll put that back on forward. So all you do is you, you just lift that up, slide it in and that's it, job done. <clears throat> now one reason why I wanted to do the quick release is because um, I have a snow plow blade as well and I got the snow plow blade from Bruder uh, which is a 114 scale toy company. Um, they do a lot of scale trucks and everything that people convert to RC uh, so again we'll just pop that off you see how quick and easy that is that's rather than having to unbolt everything as I say the only thing is it, it does wiggle about a bit so and there we have the snow blade Now when these come in the box, I'll just show you the box, bear with me. Move that out of the way without breaking everything. So that's what you get in the kit. Uh, it's basically just designed to go onto the front of Bruder toys but you can remove some parts and do a little adjustments to make it go on this so if you're interested there's the Bruder part number up there 02582 and you have to excuse me I've got another little project in there so there's the back end of it So I remo removed a lot of this and, and it just unclips, you don't have to break it or anything. You just remove a lot of the factory parts until you get back to what you see here. Now all I've done is taken the, these were little plastic rods through here that were fixed in so I've cut them out and just drilled through that was from the original but for the the quick release I've had to move it down here so it's just a an M I think that's an M3 M3 uh, threaded bolt and a nut on and these are M4s Now these linkages here, so to make it work with the quick release, I've had to actually reverse these. So these would be actually pushed on from this end that way. But in order to get it to work, I've had to put them in from behind. Uh, what those do is it allows you to turn that so you can angle uh, the tilt of the blade. So let's pop it on then. Show you how we're going here. Oops. Again, just. So there we have it. It's just as simple as that. So you can see that, what that does is tilt the angle of your blade and it gives you quite a quite a versatile plow blade
so we are quite an easy adaptation to it as you can see I've I've, I've lifted my wheels off I'll take it under. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the brooder. Snow plow blade. I'll try and get that back down now. <laughs> I haven't used this for a while. There we go. So there you go. So um, although it's you know it's a bit it's a, it's a bit of uh, slop in it, but it's okay. I don't know what strength it'll have once uh, pushing dirt or anything or snow. Because believe it or not, here in Southwest Scotland we haven't had any in this area. Just rain. <laughs> And you can't snow play rain. So that's uh, that's one one other adaptation there. So the quick release, the the arm extensions, the Magom RC wheels and tires. Now one other thing that was quite uh, quite a pain to do in these actually was change the battery over. Because you've got to tilt the whole thing over, as you can see, the battery compartment is here. So you would have to take that little screw out and open it up and change the battery. But you'll see something a little different in here if I can open it up. <laughs> if we can open it up, is there's no battery in there. This is all tyre wheel weights and self-adhesive wheel weights for balancing tyres. So that whole battery compartment there is full of those. Now, you're probably wondering where the battery's gone. I'll show you that just in a second. So there's quite a, a little bit of extra weight on here. Now, if you have a keen eye on you, You'll notice that I've cut through along here, down here, and put some hinges on. So we now have that. So inside here is where you would have all the weights, all the big lead weights. I've kept a couple in there. Uh, as you can see, I've got two, two of those in there. Sorry about the camera movement. Now this actually held four of those. So I've taken the top two out and the actual shape of the plastic part in here was rounded to accept uh, another two weights. So what I've done is I've taken I took this off and I took out all of the extra supports inside with a Dremel tool so it's all nice and curved and smooth and that gave me room to then place the stock battery in there as you can see it's a snug fit but it fits so there we are so that tucks away in nicely there and again I've because I've got rid of some of the weights there I've just put some more tire weights on on the top but not too much that it uh, interferes with the the lid so it just pops away nicely in there and then you can tuck the wires up nice and neat and what I've done to help the lid stay closed is I've got some 
little magnets just glued in here and where those marry up to is those little screws there and it's easily to adjust if, uh, if the magnet's not uh, keeping it closed you just unscrew the screws a little bit so that it meets the top of the magnet and then it holds it nice and firm for you as you can see I'm pulling on that and it's staying closed so that's another little thing that I've done and here's me saying that I haven't done much <laughs> But there is an awful lot that uh, that you can do with these these machines. People have gone. Uh, another thing that you probably noticed is that the steering is quite quick on this. Well, that was one of the first things I've done. I didn't video it. That was before my days of YouTube. So the steering is quite uh, quite quick on it. Again, that was. An upgraded steering motor so this is one of the I think this is a v, uh, v1 the version 1 and an, a, don't quote me but I think the actual v4 uh, models have got the, the better steering I think and more proportionate proportional acceleration as far as I've been led to believe anyway I might be wrong um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a total, it handles totally different now from when I first got it. Again, the steering helps drastically. These tyres are amazing. I love these. Um, now, you're probably wondering how I got to match the paint. Uh, that was, it's not a perfect match, but it is pretty close. So, after scouring uh, lots of forums and everything, somebody mentioned um, Caterpillar Yellow Number 3. So I thought I'd get some off eBay and uh, there's a company that mixes it up and puts it in aerosol. So I got, I got a, a can and I was quite impressed with the, with the match. It's, it's really pretty close. So what I've got is here's the oh if I can read that there. So yellow car pillar number three shade seven A. So I'm quite sure if you Google that, you would be able to find some. So there we are. And they also, I also managed to get, you know, for painting the tops of the little hinges there, was a little touch-up paint. Let me see if I can bring this in. There we go. Again, just cut yellow. Slightly different shade, but it was only for doing um, the tops of the hinges there, and then the, the cutouts that I'd done, just to try and hide it. I'm saying it's a different shade. It's probably it's just settled. I'll have to. You would have to shake it up. Huh? Get it mixed. I should store it upside down for a while, actually. So that's uh, that's that's the paint. Little brooder figure in there. So that's really all I've done with that. Quite a quite a few little mods, though. <clears throat> 
Now the hinges, if you're interested in doing these sorts of things on any other vehicles, I'll just move that out of the way. That's quite heavy. That's these little uh, brass hinges. They come in quite handy for lots of things actually. And they're at super tiny. Nice little brass hinges. Oops. Excuse my old hands. And they come with little pins. I think these are designed for. Wait a minute. No, it's all in Chinese. I don't know. I think when I searched um, for them. I searched for dollhouse hinges, brass uh, dollhouse hinges. I think these are about 112 scale. Um, but again, don't quote me on that. And these are the little, little pins that come with them. But when I put the hinges on there, I use some tiny little screws, which I'll just show you. I've got. That's one thing about this hobby is you go to do one job or one little modification and you can't buy like two of anything. You have to buy like 50. <laughs> so you've got all these boxes and packets and trays of stuff that you only needed two of. So <laughs> It makes me laugh, actually. Like this. <laughs> I wanted some little screws. So, in here, the little screws that I put those in with are... Let's see, that'll close up. So that's what these are. Laptop repair screws. Focus. So these are M2.4, M2.5, 2.6, M2.3s and M2.3s and the, the 4, the 5, the 6, the 5 and the 8, that's the actual length in millimetres, um, M3s. So it's quite a good selection of little screws. Uh, self tappers so if you're doing stuff like that you know it's a, it's a good little set to have so that's the screws that I used on the little hinges just to keep it and the magnets that I got for can't read that. Fridge magnet it says. 6.3 millimeter. And again you get it, uh, <laughs> you get lots so I'll never be stuck for fridge magnets. So that's all that is that's uh, in there. There's just two of those two of those little magnets just in there with a spot of hot glue. Job done. So that's about it. That's uh, pretty much all I've done to this. And probably all that I'm going to do with it. As I say, the, the sit on the shelf most of the year. It's just fun to do them. Something to do.
and uh, keeps you from going insane, really. Yep. Did I mention that I like these? I like these. Yeah. Yeah, so if, uh, if you want to sort of beef up your 1583, I know a lot of people don't like these. They, they look a bit odd, but for practicality and, you know, it just makes using the machine a lot better for what, what it's intended to do. They do make a bit of a difference. So there we are. That's what. That's what I've done to that. As I say, I haven't done, really done anything else. I've got a lots of projects that I should be doing, but um, my mind hasn't been on it lately. Uh, I don't know if you remember if you've watched any of my other videos. My my little border collie was kind of pace in the room the last time and uh, well basically she she had something that couldn't be fixed and we had to part ways just two days before Christmas so uh, she's no longer with me so my heart hasn't really been in into RCs for a little while and uh, she's greatly missed so anyway, that's, um, yeah, that's basically all I've been doing, is that. Um, you can see boxes of uh, Hobbywing ESCs ready for doing things that I haven't got around to doing yet. Um, I've got a crawler that I have to build and try and put a, a, a discovery body on. And pretty much that's about all at the moment. So I just thought I'd uh, pop on and show you the little modifications that I've done to this. As uh, I didn't realise there'd been quite so many until I, <laughs> until I started going through them. But uh, there we are. So anyway, I hope you. this has been of some use to somebody. You know, little modifications. That just that just makes life so much easier having your battery in there. You don't even need to have this plastic cover if you wanted to put a bigger, um, bigger capacity battery in there. You could do it. You know, you don't need these. You could do away with that, and you can get an, uh, a nice big two S in there. Uh, it's just a lot easier to get it and you could you know distribute some more weight anywhere else around the body I just like to use those uh, adhesive tire weights so anyway I thought I hope uh, if hope you enjoyed the video folks uh, if you liked it give us a little thumbs up I hope it's been some use to somebody somewhere along the line um, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one, wherever that may be. So take care, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you again. Bye for now.